I don't make food that just nourishes. I make food that ignites curiosity. I'm here to inspire people to try recipes that take them out of their comfort zone, starting with my Somali origins. My African heritage is an inspiration for me when I'm cooking and when I'm developing recipes. When you're designing a recipe, you want the components to all complement one another. The same is true here for the Genesis GV80. Everything here complements one another and it really speaks to the tone of the car. I'm Hawa Hassan, chef and writer. I'm spicy, I'm curious, and this is my origin story. Today we're going to be making baris, which is a Somali dish that loosely translates to cook and bring together. The first step to making baris is making sure that you soak your rice. I've soaked mine for about five to 10 minutes. And I do this really to dust off the starch so that my rice is able to cook fluffy and light. The baris is made in a pilaf style, which means the base of it are onion and garlic. We have this saying in my family, if you don't cook with a red onion, we don't trust you. I wholeheartedly believe that and live by it. <laughs> I was born in Somalia in a city called Mogadishu in the late 80s. I am the second eldest of 10 children, the first daughter. So you can imagine what time in the kitchen looked like for me. Lots of helping, lots of assisting my mom and being her, her sidekick, which is still my favorite job. When I was seven, I was sent to Seattle because a war had taken over Somalia in 1991, and my family was given sponsorship to send one of our children. Originally, the plan was for my family to join us in the US, but because of immigration laws had changed in 1993, they were unable to join us. And I ended up assimilating and going to school and becoming Somali-American. <laughs> I just remember I was going off on an adventure. I was gonna see this new place first, but everyone was gonna follow. And so my job was just to be good, to go to school, and to report about my day-to-day -day life. <laughs> Part of the simulation of my small how I like to call it, was that I had to sever ties of all things I believed made me different from the other kids. And so I wasn't eating Somali food anymore. I didn't want to go to school smelling like spices. The things that I grew up on were hot dogs and pizza, just like everyone else in my neighborhood. And so a lot of the reason why I do create food now from my home country is to really build a place for myself. The thing that has always brought me back home has been the ability to cook and create from my culture. And so I'm using these foods, not only to tell stories of where I come from, but to create a home for myself. So we're gonna move on to the next step of the bris. Add olive oil, warm it a bit, add my onion. I put the cloves and the cinnamon, toss it around until it's softened. So now that our onions, cloves, and cinnamon have completely come together, I'm gonna to throw in a pinch of cardamom and two cloves of garlic into our recipe. You can never have too much cardamom, so if you feel like you've gone overboard, keep going. We'll fold it all together in about 30 seconds. All of this will come together before we move on. In 2005, I'd moved to New York City. I'd had this really full, independent life. I'd gotten to this place where I really wanted to peel back the identities I had created for myself. I wanted to reunite with my family, and I had the capacity to go to Oslo, where my family had migrated to in the late 90s. And it just felt like I had found home again. So in 2008, on a random Thursday, one that had been planned out for a long time. My mother picked me up at the airport in Oslo, and immediately as they drove up, I recognized them, so I started walking to the car. And at this point, it had been 15 years since we had been separated. I'd say that it was emotional, but it was also invigorating to belong, to instantly feel like home hadn't ultimately been a place, but these people. I got in the car and my mom said, how did you recognize me? <laughs> we look just alike. 
Go ahead and dice a few tomatoes. Ultimately, what we want is to be able to pull from the juices of the tomato. You know, this is something that takes 10 minutes to prepare and 30 minutes to cook. And it, it really does give a whole new take on simple flavors that we're familiar with. Somali cuisine, like all of African cuisine, is not difficult to make. I want to dismantle the idea that our food is heavy, that it's hard, that it's not easy to access. These spices are in your everyday pantry. So I've drained my rice already. We're gonna go ahead and add it to our base. I'll fold it all together. Let it sit for a few minutes while I get my water boiling. You want to do this until you get a little bit of a nutty smell and until the water completely evaporates, or rather the juice from the tomatoes. So the time has come for the raisins to go in. This is where Somalia gets its sweet and savory name for its food from, because we love the hawaj is the base, and then we always add something sweet like raisins or bananas. So there goes that. Here's our hawaj, which consists of cardamom, cumin, turmeric, cinnamon, whole cloves. We're gonna fold all of that together before putting our boiling water in. So now we're gonna reduce our heat to low. We're gonna cover and let the rice absorb the liquid. That should take us about 15 minutes and we'll be back to see. My mom really does enjoy that I cook Somali food now because I think one of her biggest fears was that I would be so far away from who they are, um, and rightfully so. She's always like, that's my American daughter, but she's the most similar to me. So she's really excited that I've, I have found this thing and I've turned it into a career for myself. Let's check and see if our baris is done. Oh, wow. It's come together beautifully. The coloring is perfect. So in our household, this is how my mother which I assume she learned from my grandmother. This is how most of the women in my family taste their food. They do it in the palm of their hand, like that. Oh, it's perfect. Transfer it, because we don't want the rice to cook anymore. When I make bris, I'm instantly transported to home. It really does feel like my mother's kitchen no matter where I am. So anytime I'm longing for home, I know that I can just go ahead and ground some spices, make my hawaj, and then put my bris on and literally be at home in 20 to 30 minutes. One of the ways I say I love you is making food for people. It really is my love language. My main goal is to build longer tables and shorter fences, and I'm able to do that just by bringing people of all walks of life together. 